Hi, class. Welcome to Library Instruction for Interdisciplinary Study Students. My name is Angela Rand. I'm the uh, Interdisciplinary Studies Librarian. My contact information is here on this screen. Should you need it after this instruction or when you're taking other classes, you can give me a call or you can email me and ask me questions about uh, how to find information. Uh, hopefully this um, online screencast will give you all of the information you need to conduct your review of the literature and get you through um, the assignments that you have in this class. You might want to take the opportunity or go ahead and write down my email address and my telephone number. I will put this information up on the screen one more time at the end of this session. So I think in about um, 50 minutes we should be able to get through all of the instruction. That's the amount of time it takes when we do these courses um, in a face-to-face -face environment. If you've gone to the library's website at southalabama.edu forward slash library, you probably saw the OneSearch search box. And so that OneSearch search box is um, kind of a simple way for you to search a lot of information that we subscribe to. So we subscribe to um, lots of ebooks and print books and media and um, have several databases. So, you know, the good news is OneSearch searches the South Cat Library catalog, which is all of the books on the shelves. It's the ebooks, it's all of the media, the government documents. Additionally, when you use the OneSearch box, you're searching the databases. So you're searching in magazines and serial publications and journals, um, and you're searching Academic Search Complete, Opposing Viewpoints, EBSCO Host, and 180 plus more databases. So that might sound like a good way to get some searching done. But when you think about the fact that if you are searching on a topic that's related to social services or health care, and you're using the one search box, you can't differentiate which databases you're searching in. So you'll be searching across the medical databases, the statistical databases, and so you, you could end up with some search results that have a lot of garbage in them that are not any use to you. So in this tutorial, we are, later on, you will learn how to search using EBSCOhost. Um, one thing I want to point out to you is that uh, when you're doing your homework uh, this weekend or at night from your home, you're not on the main campus, you can still access the library's databases using remote login. You will log in with your J number and your JAGmail password. So when you conduct a search, there'll be a bar at the top of the page that says you must log in for full access. You'll just use this information, J number and JAGmail password. We need to talk briefly about the difference between scholarly and versus popular articles. Uh, for this assignment, you will be retrieving scholarly peer-reviewed articles. So you can see in the uh, table I have here that scholarly articles are written by scholars in the field. Um, they refer usually to some empirical research that has been conducted and they're peer-reviewed by other experts in the field. So scholarly articles have a, some scientific language, maybe some graphs and charts. Um, it tr they try to use unbiased um, scientific language, no advertisements. And you can contrast that with popular articles or magazines written by journalists in the field, something like Oprah Magazine or PC Magazine. They're not peer-reviewed, they're edited, but they're not peer-reviewed by scholars in the field, and they're newsy, informational-style um, articles that are not necessarily based on um, empirical research, which is what scholarly articles are based on. The magic to being a good searcher when you're faced with the library's databases, and we have so many, is this point here boolean searching. Once you learn how to use boolean search terms when you are searching the library's databases, it changes everything. Boolean searching can save you time and effort so that you don't keep 
because using uh, the wrong search terms and putting them together in the wrong way. Boolean search terms are very, very important for you to use. You're busy, you have families, jobs, um, other classes that you need to take care of, and so when you use Boolean searching, you uh, cut to the chase very quickly. Boolean search terms are very simply the words and, or, and not in capital letters. When you put them into the search boxes, and some of the search boxes have um, already put these Boolean search terms in place for you, and you can just switch from one to the other. But you, if you put AND in all caps between Creative Commons and Copyright, the library's databases will search for articles that have Creative Commons as a phrase and the word copyright in the title, in the abstract, and in the same sentence or very close to each other in the body of the text. And so that is a sort of relevancy ranking. The articles that appear in your result list at the top are those most likely to have your search terms in the title or in the abstract or in the same sentence um, in the body of the text, which gives you some idea that that article is really going to be about Creative Commons and Copyright, for instance. You can broaden a search by using OR in capital letters, such as searching on selfies or self-portraits. So, although Boolean search terms are very simple and um, rather easy to explain, they are very, very powerful when you're trying to find some specific information in the haystack that happens to be the library's databases. Of course, you can always use not, which excludes terms. Perhaps you want copyright, articles on copyright, but not on infringement. Um, a good example of how not was used in another class is someone in the hospitality and tourism class. I was teaching them this class, and uh, we had been searching on hospitality and tourism and the student wanted articles only on tourism but not on hospitality so she used boolean searching she used the not to exclude the term she didn't want and voila she got some good articles in her result list there are some advanced search strategies that can be used with boolean searching if you're using three or more search terms you can um, put them, put two terms together to do phrasal searching, put them in uh, parentheses or in quotations. You can see the copyright violation and, that and is the Boolean search term, infringement but not dispute. So I've got two Boolean search terms there and some phrasal, phrasal searching. Truncating may become useful to you depending on what topic you're uh, searching on. My example here is on law, laws, lawyer, lawyers, and lawful, but perhaps. Okay, so eventually what we need to talk about and what you need to try and match up are search terms to the topic that you're searching on. So it takes some intense thinking about the topic. Um, when you think about your topic, you should be able to answer the questions who, what, when, where. Those things should be included in your topic sentence. Uh, so here's an example, uh, a poor example of a topic sentence. It's a typical sentence that's uh, first-time students or new students or students new to research would write down. I am interested in whales at SeaWorld. Great. Being interested in whales at SeaWorld is a, I would imagine, a noble thing to do. And, and um, nothing at all wrong with being interested in whales at SeaWorld. But this topic sentence doesn't really say who. Like, what is the perspective we're talking about? Um, we want to know who is interested in whales at SeaWorld. 
that perspective can change the kind of search terms that you use when you're doing this kind of a search. Um, are you only interested in whales or are you interested in other animals? Is it only whales? And are you interested in only SeaWorld or maybe there are other places that you're interested in? So let's take just a minute and think about how we can uh, revise this topic sentence. Okay, so I have the topic sentence typed right here. I'm interested in whales at SeaWorld. And so let it, as follow along with me and think about um, the who, what, when, where, maybe why, those kinds of questions in your own head if you were uh, presenting this topic sentence. So uh, my question to you as a student would be, what interests you about whales at SeaWorld? And so you need to come up with an idea of what interests you about whales in SeaWorld. So maybe you're not interested in whales per se, maybe you're interested in whales in captivity. I'm interested in whales in captivity. Maybe that's the topic. And maybe it's not just whales. So what's a synonym or another way of thinking about whales? What's another word for whales? That's a broader scope. Maybe you're only interested in whales, but maybe really the, re the research will be based on a broader scope. So perhaps what we really mean is we're interested in um, large marine mammals. And are we only interested in the sea world? Is it only sea world? Or does captivity capture what we mean by sea world? I'm interested in large marine mammals being held in captive, being held captive at, um, um, let's see, what, what's another word we could say, um, amusement parks, water parks. You see how now when we think about more than just I am interested in whales at SeaWorld, we can get some better search terms by saying that um, we want to explore the effects of captivity on large marine mammals held at in water parks. Because if you don't express yourself better than uh, something like I'm interested in whales at SeaWorld, you're, um, there's a tendency for students to regard their topic as if it's the only perspective on a topic. So when the student uh, in the library instruction class, live class that gave us this topic, that student was really interested in the effects of captivity on the lifespan of large marine mammals being held in uh, water parks. But I did this example for, I used this example for hospitality and tourism management. And so think about their perspective. Their perspective on being interested in whales at SeaWorld would be different. What are some of the differences? Well, maybe they want to know about um, uh, how to build a tank to hold a large marine mammal. Maybe they want to know what to feed them, what, how to treat them. And if it could even be extended, depending on your perspective, to how to advertise large marine mammals. Maybe you want to know how to find a trainer. 
Okay, you want to just, let's just say, training large marine mammals for entertainment. Okay, so see the two different perspectives here on the interest in whales at sea at Sea World or large marine mammals at Sea World. Sea World. One being those concern about the effects of lifespan, uh, the effects of captivity on the lifespan and health of the animal, and the other on how to best treat the animal, animal, get people to come and look at them, how to feed them, how to train them to do tricks. Two different perspectives. So when you write down your topic sentence, make sure that it's very clear to everyone what your perspective is. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. So now we can see how I'm interested in whales at SeaWorld is not a very good topic sentence. How about this one? Continue thinking about topics and in, um, in your own mind, think about what the differences are here. What are the effects of multitasking? We haven't really answered the who, what, when, where, and how. This is a popular um, topic, particularly when we're talking about students. But the effects of multitasking can be seen in um, other places. Take, for instance, an air traffic controller who must be able to multitask. And maybe we're interested in the effects of multitasking on um, on personnel who have multitasking, daily multitasking, as a part of their job. So you can see how different that is when you think about multitasking um, and the detriment of multitasking for students who should be studying or are staying on a single train of thought versus multitasking being considered a necessary skill for some professions. And then what are the effects of multitasking on those professions, on the people in those professions. So you see, asking yourself the who, what, when, where, and how are very, is very important.